hello guys welcome back to another video if you are using Amazon Linux 2 in your production environments or maybe for your learning purpose and if you are looking for a GUI desktop to connect to the instances graphically you are at the right video by default all EC2 Linux instances come with command line interface but in this video I will show you how to connect to Amazon Linux 2 instance in GUI mode. Let's get started. On April 30, 2020, AWS released a feature made desktop environment that is added to the Amazon Linux 2 AMI with .NET Core and Mono. With this release, what are all the advantages that we are getting? Everything we'll see in practical. Let's try to launch Amazon Linux 2 instance. Go to the AWS console and then click on launch instance and search for Amazon Linux 2. And then select this AMI Amazon Linux 2 with .NET Core, PowerShell and then Mono and Mate Desktop Environment. This AMI is provided by the Amazon. Let's select this AMI. For this demo, I want to go with 4 GB RAM. Then click next. I want to launch this instance in by default VPC. Next add storage. 8 GB is enough for this demonstration. Click next tags. I want to assign a tag called name is Amazon Linux then next configure security group let's create a security group so apart from 22 we have to open rdp protocol I'm opening this 3389 port to anywhere and then review let's review all the options and then click on launch I have already a key pair with me I want to utilize that and then click on launch instances click on view instances let's wait for this instance to be ready instance is ready let's copy the public ip and go to the terminal ssh hyphen i and then we have to pass the key and then the username is ec2 hyphen user at the rate the public ip it is connected it is always best practice to update the instance when you connect initially and then we need to assign a password to ec2 hyphen user Let's do that. sudo pass wd ec2 hyphen user. Let's try to enter a password. Here the password is assigned. Let's try to connect to our ec2 instance using the RDP protocol. Because in this server, XRDP protocol is already installed. Let's try to check the status of the particular service. sudo systemctl status XRDP. This service by default is configured with this AMI and the service is up and running. Let's try to connect to the instance using the RDP protocol. Now connect to this instance using the RDP client. 
add desktop and then paste the public IP of the instance and then click on add then double click this now it is asking to enter the username and password now you have to enter the username is easy to hyphen user and then password whatever the password that we have assigned previously we need to enter here let's click continue now it is asking to verify the certificate click on continue there you go we just connected to the Amazon Linux EC2 instance graphically here you can see the EC2 users home directory and then desktop and then the whole folder structure we can see let's try to explore this click on system and here you can see the preferences uh, if you want to add any proxy details here you can add everything graphically close it and if you want to browse internet by default chrome web browser will be there just click on the browser and then system tools terminal is also available there you go we can execute any command over here ls in hell who am i and cd slash opt so whatever commands if you want to execute you can execute within this terminal all right let's try to install visual studio code because it's a code editor it's a graphical tool right let's try to browse it download vs code And I want to download a tar file over here. 64 bit, download it. It is downloading. It's completed. Let's try to unzip it. Go to the application, system tools, and then main terminal. Let's try to edit the font. Edit. profile preferences and then unselect this and then change the font I think 18 is good then click close go to the downloads and check for the file name and then extract it we can use tar command to extract the files tar hyphen xvf and then the file name it is extracted here you can see it created a folder over here go inside the vs code and then go to bin and then if you want to open visual studio code editor here you can see one binary will be there so if we execute then it will open a visual Studio record editor there you go finally we have connected to the amazon linux 2 instance graphically and then we installed a visual studio code editor editor inside it and we can create files and we can write the stuff and then we can save these files anything now let's try to understand the advantages that we are getting with this release or with this AMI go back to the browser Chrome browser and if we can read this paragraph so that we can understand the advantages customer run dotnet applications on Amazon Linux 2 without paying Windows licensing cost this is very advanced and which is very useful let's say if you want to run dotnet applications you should have a Windows server but with this AMI, without Windows, you can able to run .NET applications so that you can eliminate the Windows licensing cost in your project so that for less cost, you can able to run the .NET applications. And also along with PowerShell Core, which is provided a shell and scripting experience similar to Windows. Let's go back to the server. 
and then go to the terminal if you observe clearly now the terminal is Linux based terminal right so if I want to connect to the PowerShell I have to execute PWSH this command will try to connect to the PowerShell and here you can see now the Linux terminal is converted into Windows PowerShell now we can execute any PowerShell commands like Windows DAR it will display the list of the files in the present working directory and then we can get the time zone as well so this is also Windows command right so on top of a Linux machine you are getting a PowerShell core that is already installed and also Amazon Linux 2 instances running their .NET applications from an intuitive graphical user interface without using the command line and built-in GUI based tools can be used to perform common tasks such as add or remove softwares apply software updates organizing the files launching the programs and monitoring the system health everything we can do graphically I think this feature uh, will be useful for so many folks I think this video is very helpful to you guys hope you liked it please subscribe to my channel and stay safe stay healthy I'll see you in the next video